<laughs> yes, now the real fun begins. Do or don't? <laughs> don't. Do or don't. Oh, I'm that like, good. Oh, this is a very fancy machine. Thank you. Remember we were shopping for it? And I was like, get the Zoom. Because it's the flash, and Zoom is an important part of the flash. Exactly. And you said, that means nothing to my technology. I'm trying to do a job. And I said, no, but... <laughs> I got this talk about flash. Hey, Tom, what would Eobard Dawn's favorite snack be? I love the fact that you are just bridging the flash with my podcast, Mike and Tom Eat Snacks. It's almost like you guys are mates. Just literally, oh, my God. I God, I love you. All I want to do is talk about that thing. And you just led me into this. Oh my gosh. Well, you know, it's a really good question. Um, his fa Eobard Dawn's favorite snack, I think, would involve some kind of cow-based meat product right. because cows don't exist where he's from. They're out of cows where Eobard Thawne is from. They're out of cows. So it's something like that. Maybe some beef jerky. All right. I think the meat beef jerky might be something. All right. I like the fact that in my head, as everyone here is waiting to talk about the flash, I'm like, would it be beef jerky? <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, oh my god. But listen, listen to this podcast, you won't be disappointed. Mike and Tom eat snacks with Mike Lee and Black and Tom Cavanaugh. It's Mate. funny. It's great. It is funny, and it's very blue. It's not what you're used to seeing. Agreed? Like that's Agreed. Like the, yeah, Agreed. We're hearing. Yeah. Given, that your characters are, yeah. given that your character's from the future, I'm wondering what he would think of the same-sex marriage rule that just happened here in the U.S. Like he'd be like, duh! <laughs> I think, my God, you idiots! Oh, God. Like, oh, 2015, good work, everybody! <laughs> Nice job, thonk, 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 the humans. You do like that. I agree. Right. Well, yeah. What can you tell us about your character in the second season? I can't unfortunately tell you anything, but I can dodge and weave and bob and duck questions like crazy. How about the opportunity to sort of reinvent yourself in the second season? Is that an opportunity that's being presented? That's a good answer to that question right there. Yes, it's, it is an opportunity. You know, my starting point has always been, will always be, uh, reverse flash. So that's one way of uh, getting to the question. Like that is uh, that is the track that uh, um, that is the starting gate to the track that uh, I'm running. Uh, and I love uh, how we to keep it the running uh, um, motif. How we uh, how we ran that track last year. I thought they did a really good job, ending with a, I thought a well earned. Um, season finale in which you know sometimes the season finales are like there's well we got to have a big thing and so you have to you work hard and you formulate it but it's not organic i feel like with rick cosnick sacrificing himself with the death of eddie thawne coming a little bit out of left field i feel we've actually earned kind of a big moment there and so the job now is to try and vault the high bar that rick and um the season finale set for the second season and what's nice about it is you know, um, our writing room, <clears throat> totemically writing it, I think is a little bit underrated in, uh, in what we do, and um, our writing room, I think it's safe to say, has been unafraid of the challenge from the beginning, to the point where Greg Belanti last year, I just, this is my third show with Greg, and, you know, we came out of the gate so fast, you know, last year, around episode seven, and said, we were all worried about story, because we were just coming out, getting up, technical, the plus eight, and here comes Grodd, and like, you're, get your you're, you're you're unveiled in episode nine as the man in the yellow suit. And boom, boom, boom. And all, so I said to Greg, we all worried about story. And verbatim, Greg's answer was, well, there's always more story. You know? And so they're unafraid, which I like. They're fearless. They're not trying to repeat a pilot that worked. And so in season two, it's that. We're not trying to repeat season one. You know, we've got like twists and turns where open in a much darker place, but picking up where we left off last year, you know, it's... You know, I've read the, the, the first few episodes and, you know, it's accelerating. You know, it's not going to be, let's try and follow a model that seemed to work in season one. You know? And so, the writers are fearless. There's going to be a lot of stuff coming up, a lot of twists and turns. Um, I think that if you were a fan of the show, uh, what we have in, in store will keep you a fan. I think one of the things that I enjoyed most about your character in season one was uh, you were so likable as, as a, a mentor figure, but also so great as the villain. I think the audience kind of had a tough time deciding which version they liked better. What's which, nice about this is, again, nothing I did. Mm -hmm. This is those guys crafting a character that, who genuinely had goals that made him good and bad. He needed to protect Barry, so he had he ended up in that relationship while protecting him, had that mentorship, which was genuine, and then affection bled into it, which he couldn't, couldn't help because he's so winning. At the same time, this is a guy trying to get home, and 
people needed to die for him to get home, so be it. To, them, to him, they'd already been dead for a hundred years. So he had these two bulls, which were genuine and organic, allowing me as the character to play you know, both those levels without it being a dastardly, you know, sketchy villain, you know, and so um, I think we have more of that coming up in, in season two. It was, a, it, for an actor, just a, a joy to be able to play two levels that were like, again, like I used that word earned, but kind of earned. He had these goals and he was trying to get home. Which uh, side did you like doing better? Well, I, I really like the reason I signed on was to put on that suit and be the reverse flash. You know, so for me, like when it gets robust and athletic as it sometimes does on our show, and we're wearing a thing and we're facing off, I love that. Stuff. Yeah. Well, All right. Thanks, you guys. Enjoy. Enjoy. Nice talking to you. Bye. -bye.